Thanks to those of you who have checked out my Patreon, I am able to make a new series of Pokemon Epics. And a big shout out, of course, to the Nerd Therapist. Hey, Pokemon Masters, Berkey Patobi here, and I'm sorry, I can't help but keep on rearranging. My set has changed again. If this is your first video watching, then hello, this is the first set that you're seeing. But I seem to change up my set like every couple of weeks, and it's just, I have this compulsion to rearrange my room like all the time. And also because I have like one or two videos pre-filmed, don't be surprised if you see some stuff on the previous set. But if you see stuff moving around, don't worry about it. Speaking of those videos upcoming, they are part of my sponsorship that I'm doing with DNA to do with Pokemon Masters. This video is not sponsored by DNA or Pokemon Masters, but it is to do with it, kind of. Because one of my favorite things about the game has been uh, unlocking the characters, the various characters, and learning about their lore and their stories, because some of their stories have been further expanded upon. And one of the more interesting ones that's shown up recently is Agatha of the Kanto Elite Four. Agatha, a specialist, of course, of the ghost-type Pokemon, although I think more Pokemon on her team are poison than ghost, but she is a specialist of these types. In the Pokemon manga, she appears as a big adversary uh, to the main characters and is, I, I think, evil? I think she's a member of Team Rocket. I actually haven't read this far. I just like looking at the pictures. And the one thing that everyone knows about Agatha, more, more than anything, is that Agatha has some kind of secret history with Professor Oak. When you challenge her in Pokemon Red, Blue, Leaf Queen, Fire Red, Let's Go Pikachu, or Eevee Yellow, whenever you interact with her, she always says the same thing. Professor Oak speaks really highly of you. He used to be so handsome and strong, but now he's just an old coot fiddling with his Pokedex. He is a shadow of his former self. Those lines of dialogue have absolutely captured me and so many of us. So many of us, of course, taking the words handsome and charming and strong to think, oh, she definitely had a crush on him and they must have shared some kind of romantic relationship that went wrong. And it's more than likely that with Oak being an old man that he's had a number of romantic relationships. I mean, he has grandkids. And we have no idea who Blue and Daisy Oak's grandmother or even parents are. I've done a theory before. Taking the characters of Agatha and Oak as the grandparents, Bertha as the mother. Bertha is from the Sinnoh Elite Four, and I'm gonna get back to that in a bit. And then yeah, Gary slash Blue slash Green, if you're in Japan, being the grandchild. But now with Pokemon Masters, I'm thinking it's not so clear cut. First of all, I unlocked Agatha like two days ago. And we really get to learn a lot more about Agatha's characteristics. For example, she is very, uh, I think she's an introvert. During the Sync Pair stories, a day out with Agatha and her Gengar, you realize that she's in a cave pretty much on her own. She likes hanging out with her Gengar and she likes the peace and quiet. And when you ask her, how are you? And let's hang out. She's like, oh my God, you are so happy and smiley. Why is it everywhere I go, I am met with people like you? And that's the first clue, and it kind of permeates into the rest of the dialogue that she says about Oak. Characters like yourself who are loud and want to introduce themselves and make friends are the norm in the world of Pokemon. I mean, everyone is super annoyingly friendly. Uh, this guy. And Agatha is self-contained. She likes to be alone. She likes to think and be melancholic. I mean, after all, her type specialty is ghosts, literal dead beings. She, she likes to be alone. And naturally, she provides more information about Oak. She says that Oak kept on trying to talk to her and people seemed to gravitate towards Oak. He had a lot of friends and he was very, very strong when it came to Pokemon battling. In fact, hold up, I'm gonna get the exact lines of dialogue open. Ah uh, yes, yeah, she's alone in her cave with Gengar. She likes places where the sun doesn't shine. It makes, the, the darkness makes her feel calm. Don't judge me, it's just how I am, she says. I ask if she gets lonely and she says, it's none of your concern. She is a very, very self-contained and reserved person, clearly. Ah, here we go, the real juice, the real tea. Do you know Oak? I've been stuck with him for a long time. Now, I don't know what that line means. I mean, does it mean that she works with Oak? Oak does have to record Champion's progresses in the Hall of Fame in Kanto, and she works at the Elite Four, so possibly that's what she means by stuck. But maybe she just means in the more abstract, I've been stuck thinking about Oak for a long time. That old Duff was once tough and handsome. He's a shadow of his former self now, so reiterating stuff we already kind of knew. Um, he does know a lot about Pokemon, which is why he's already surround always surrounded by people he used to shine so brightly. 
Compared to him, I'm the quiet type when it comes to Pokemon. I like to get lost in thought. I was doing what I liked, but then that duff Oak would not stop talking to her. So again, kind of just Oak being Professor Oak, enthusiastic about Pokemon, talking probably at her a lot about Pokemon. I think he was just trying to be nice, but he was giving me help I never asked for. So clearly there's some kind of scenario, perhaps Professor Oak being a teacher, giving her lots of advice that she doesn't want. And Agatha's like, leave me alone, let's have a Pokemon battle. But turns out, of course, that Professor Oak is really blooming good. In fact, according to Agatha, Oak was undefeated. And I think this ties into the Pokemon manga where Oak was the first Pokemon champion, I think. Right, yeah, and all this time they spent battling, clearly he started meaning a lot to Agatha. Now that doesn't outright say a relationship, that just says he meaned a lot to her. Maybe from Oak, this was just like purely, purely platonic battling. And here we go, one day he ruins it all saying that he wants to make a Pokedex. Pokemon are for battling, he wouldn't listening, he wasted my precious time, and he'd had enough of our battles, and he left. He left with her having never defeated him. Why do charming men have to be so meddlesome? He trampled all over my youth. So this happened when they were very, very young. I think that's a good place to stop. Oh, and my, um, my light went out. That should be turned. One moment. Sorry about the lighting change. That was the uh, power of Agatha's ghost types messing with the set. Anyway, point is, I think we can start seeing the picture being painted here. She didn't like him very much at first. He talked at her a lot and she was like, let's battle so you can shut up and leave me alone. They battle, but he's really good, undefeated. She can't beat him. And as a result of his battling powers, he actually goes to respect and maybe grow some fondness towards him. But it seems likely, and the reason that she still resents him to this day is twofold. One, it never materialized into anything. As she says, he was wasting her time. He was like, I'm gonna make a Pokedex because I'm Professor Oak. And she's like, no, you, sh I keep, you should keep battling with me. And then obviously he's oblivious as we all are. So he just, he just goes, he goes to make the Pokedex. It's not that she thinks the Pokedex is dumb. It's that she's frustrated that Oak left before the relationship could become anything, which actually kind of confirms the idea that Agatha is not Blue or Gary's father, uh, grandmother, father? She's definitely not, <laughs> she's definitely not their father, but also not the grandmother. Oh, and of course the second reason she would resent him is that she never got the chance to actually beat him in battle, which is where she prides a lot of her, you know, I mean, she's an elite four member. Now, she mentions that all of this happened in their youth and there's even more breaking this down. Now, I never unlocked the character of Chris, but I was fascinated to learn more about Chris because she's only appeared in Pokemon Crystal, but her sync pair story didn't give us really much information about her, but lots more about Oak and Agatha. Locks didn't unlock the character and so sent me the footage and the dialogue is just fascinating. Chris basically starts talking about how one day she wants to become a Pokemon professor and all the professors specialize in something, which is true. All of the Pokemon professors do specialize in something and she can't decide whether she wants to go into Pokemon ecology or Pokemon battles. And she says the following, the Oak already specializes in Pokemon ecology and Agatha specializes in Pokemon battles. Now to me, that's really, really weird. You have a whole roster of Pokemon professors to talk about. Oak, Elm, Birch, Rowan, so on and so forth. Why in this context would you bring up Agatha? Unless Agatha also studied in the exact same kind of place that Oak did when they were younger. During their youth, they were both studying to become Pokemon researchers and Oak decided to go into Pokemon ecology and make the Pokedex and Agatha decided to go into battlings and ultimately became an elite four member. Chris kind of shines this light onto their backstory and it turns out, cause while I haven't read the manga, I only look at the pictures, after Googling it, Agatha does in fact mention in the manga that Professor Oak used to be part of their research group. Now there's a kind of hidden bit of Pokemon lore. It's super, super obscure that all of the uh, all of the Pokemon professors studied at the same university, the uh, Celadon University. That's actually apparently just an established bit of lore that is superseded throughout, I think, bits of the TV show and bits of the games. And it, it's like really obscure. But perhaps in their youth, Oak and Agatha both studied at this university together she just wanted to get on with her projects. She, he talked at her a load. These battles ensued. Oak was really, really good. She never got the chance to beat him. And before too long, he was gone. But by that time, he had already charmed her. And so that kind of built up this lifelong resentment. But there's one more part to this. 
Because as we all know, at some point or another, Professor Oak lived in Eterna City. He has a house in Eterna City, and supposedly when studying to become a Pokemon professor, he also studied under Professor Rowan, who is the Sinnoh region's regional professor. And this is where we get a little bit super speculative, but what if he went to make the Pokedex, and in order to do that, he went to do his kind of doctorate in the Sinnoh region. Where, as a young and beginning Pokemon professor, Professor Oak learned about Pokemon ecology under Professor Rowan, lived in Eterna City, and maybe, just maybe, had a brief relationship with Bertha. See, the Elite Four member Chantal mentions that Bertha and Agatha look an awful lot alike. Which, yeah, I mean, they kind of do. They are also both Elite Four members, and of course Bertha is of the Sinnoh region. We don't know too much about Bertha. But if Oak's research had taken him to the Sinnoh region where he had met Bertha and formed a relationship, that could really cause some resentment from Agatha if they are known in the Pokemon world to look kind of alike. And it would make sense with the previous video that I did about Oak's family tree because in the TV show, Bertha has a cousin once removed who looks kind of a little bit like a young Gary Oak. That said, that bit of this Pokemon theory is very, very speculative. So yeah, maybe take that bit with a pinch of salt. But I think one thing is for sure. When they were younger, Oak and Agatha were both part of the same research group. She developed feelings for him, but there wasn't some big relationship and Agatha is not Gary's grandmother. Because Oak being oblivious to romantic advances and only being interested in Pokemon, Oak never returned those feelings and instead disappeared to go make his Pokedex. But of course, that is just my kind of two cents on this Pokemon theory. Of course, you're gonna have to let me know what you think in the comments. Be sure to leave a like, otherwise I'm gonna have my Snorlax here sit on you. And of course, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. So hi, Pokemon Masters. This is Ash Ketchum. You just watched a video by Bird Keeper Toby. That makes you a Pokemon Master!